Hi, my name is Louisa and I'm a harm reduction health educator at Maine General. This video series covers injection techniques and today I'll be doing a step-by-step -step walkthrough of a mainline injection. If you want to learn more about safe injection practices, be sure to check out our other videos located in Maine General's harm reduction YouTube playlist. Overall, the process of mainlining flows kind of like this. You mix your drugs in a tin, sometimes called a cooker, cook contents of the tin, filter or draw up the shot from the tin with a syringe, find and clean your injection site, insert your needle, register, untie your tourniquet and inject, and then perform aftercare. Mainlining itself is the process of injecting drugs into a vein. It's the most common way to inject drugs like heroin, but it's totally not the only way. People who prefer to skin pop or muscle pop can still follow the same guidelines for mixing, cooking, and filtering a shot, as well as cleaning the injection site and performing aftercare. Before using injection drugs, you need a safe location, situation, and mindset. This means you have access to water, are with other people, and are in a positive place. To learn more about setting, check out our video on basic injection safety, located in Maine General's harm reduction YouTube playlist. One of the most important aspects of a safe setting is hygiene. Make sure your area is clean and free from clutter. Use fresh materials for each injection if you can. For more details on this, check out our other video in the Injection Techniques series on hygienic injections. This is located in Maine General's Harm Reduction YouTube playlist. So before you shoot up, you should try to gather all your materials and put them in one place. In this video, we're gonna be using small cottons, an alcohol prep pad, a BZK pad, a non-latex tourniquet, a smooth tin or cooker with a bread tie attached, sterile waters, a long 29 gauge needle, and a bio bin. We offer all of these materials at Next Step Needle Exchange because you should try to use new works and needles each time you shoot up. So once you find a safe and clean setting in which to inject and have gathered all the right supplies, you'll start by prepping your shot. First, place your cooker down on a flat surface and mix drugs with sterile water, like this. In this video, we'll just be using sterile water. If you don't have access to sterile water, your next best option is to boil water for at least 10 minutes and use that. You can add powdered vitamin C to the mix in the tin to help dissolve some drugs like brown heroin. You might also wanna use that if you're injecting pills. If you're cooking your shot, you'll next wanna tie a bread tie around the tin before heating the bottom. This reduces your risk of burning your fingers. Ideally, You'll want your shot to be as clear and free from particles as possible, so recook it if you notice many clumps. Most drugs, especially pills, never dissolve all the way, so it's really important to always filter before you inject. To filter and prep your shot, first put filters into the tin. Next, uncap your syringe. and draw up the prep shot through the cottons. Make sure not to try not to touch the bottom of the tin because this could dull or barb your needle. Once you've pulled up your drugs, you should recap your needle lightly. You don't need to put the cap all the way down because this could dull or barb the needle. You just need to place it on lightly and set it to the side like I'm doing right now. So next it's gonna be time to prep your injection site. In general, when you're mainlining, the best sites are gonna be in your arms. Next best are in your hands, next is your legs, next is your feet, and then following those are your groin and neck, which should really be avoided if that's possible. For more information on injection site location, you should check out our two video series in Maine General's Harm Reduction YouTube playlist. So tourniquets can be really helpful if you're having a hard time finding a vein or just to make veins more visible. 
And when you're tying a tourniquet, you'll probably want to put it about two to four inches above your injection site. So if I was going to inject right here in my arm, I'd probably tie it right around here-ish. So the best knot to tie is going to be a slip knot. That way, when you're mainlining, you can pull it out pretty easily. So in order to tie a slip knot on yourself, you'll hold one end of the tourniquet in the arm that you're injecting into. Take the other end, loop it around your arm, and then thread it through as if you're about to tie a knot. But instead of threading this end all the way through, you'll leave a little bubble right here. So when you're ready to remove it, you can just pull it off. To learn more about finding veins and other information about tourniquets, you should check out our video on inserting the needle located in Maine General's Harm Reduction YouTube playlist. So once you've tied off, you'll probably want to feel around for injection sites before you clean off the actual site. As you can see, there's a whole lot of track marks right here, so we're going to avoid that area and try to inject around here. So next you're going to take a fresh alcohol prep pad and wipe down the injection site. Try to wipe the prep, prep pad in just one direction, not in a circle. And try not to blow on the injection site after you've wiped it down. Next, you're gonna take your prepped needle, remove the cap, and try not to touch the tip because this could dull or barb the needle. You're going to insert your needle, bevel up at about a 15 to 45 degree angle. You're gonna pull the syringe plunger back and check for blood. You want the blood to be a brown, slow-moving color because that means you've touched a vein. But for the sake of this video, if we've touched a vein, the blood is going to be red, like you see right here. So once you've registered and know that you've hit a vein, you should take off your tourniquet before you inject. Otherwise, you could get a pretty nasty bruise. And if you tied a slip knot, you can pull on the looped end to quickly remove the tourniquet. After this, you're going to want to slowly inject your drug. Once you've finished injecting, you should remove the needle at about the same angle you inserted it and set it off to the side. You're going to use a BZK pad, which looks a little bit bigger than an alcohol prep pad, and wipe down the area. Again, trying to go in just one direction, not in a circle. After this, you're gonna to wanna to dispose of all your materials that have blood on them. So this includes your syringe and your BZK pad in a bio bin. A few hours after you've injected, you might wanna apply some triple antibiotic ointment, which we offer also offer at Next Step Needle Exchange on your closed wounds, which take about an hour or two or even three to close. At Next Step Needle Exchange, we offer many supplies like cottons, needles, sterile waters, tourniquets, alcohol prep pads, BZK pads, and triple antibiotic ointment. These supplies help create a safer, cleaner environment for drug use, reducing the risk of infections and other problems. Thanks for joining me today, and I invite you to check out more of our videos located in Maine General's Harm Reduction YouTube playlist.